Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all-new B-Link GS King X powered by the Amlogic S922XH. This is a TV box that has some ridiculous features built in. Like the ability to add two 3.5 inch hard drives inside of the bay itself, up to 16 terabytes apiece, bringing the total storage up to 32 terabytes. Now out of the box, this runs Android, but you can also boot CoreLec from an SD card. And if you do end up purchasing one of these, they do send a micro SD card with CoreLec pre-installed. So you can set it up as kind of a media server. You could also just set this up as kind of a NAS, or you could just load all of your favorite media on it and play it back directly through Android or CoreLec. All right, so let's go ahead and get everything out of the box. First up, we have our user manual. There's also a dedicated user manual on how to set up your 3.5 inch hard drives and a little card showing you how to re-download CoreLec, but this does come with an SD card preloaded. So it should be pretty easy to set up with all this documentation. Let's go ahead and move over to the accessories included. Looks like we have a six foot HDMI cable. Nothing special here. We also have a voice remote. This comes with a lot of B-Link boxes nowadays, and personally, I'm a big fan of it. We have our hard drive brackets. I've already pulled one out of here because I've installed a hard drive. Our power supply, which is 19 volt, 3 amp. So this is all you'll need to power the whole unit and the hard drives if you want to install any. And finally, we have an extra micro SD card with CoreLec pre-installed. So that's it for the accessories, but what about the box itself? As you can see, this thing is pretty beefy because we do have that stack of two 3.5 inch hard drives on the top. And they're sticking with that Skull logo they've been using on their high-end boxes. Have some ventilation on both sides. And on the rear here, this is where we'll access the 3.5-inch drives. We also have our power in, HDMI, USB, gigabit Ethernet, optical audio out. And on the front, we just have two USB 3.0 ports, our micro SD card slot, and a power button. And just to give you an idea of the size on this thing, this is a normal RK3399 Android box. Most of the time, they're exactly the same size. We also have the 2019 NVIDIA Shield TV. So yeah, this B-Link unit is massive when you compare it to other Android devices. But with those other Android devices, we don't have the ability to install internal hard drives. So obviously, one of the main draws to an Android box like this is the ability to add 3.5 inch hard drives. I've added a four terabyte drive here. This will support up to 32 terabytes, or if you want to run it in RAID, you can run it at 16 terabytes with two 16 terabyte drives. It does come with all the mounting hardware you need for two drives, and it comes with full instructions on how to get this formatted inside of Android so it's set up correctly. If we take a look inside of the bay here, you can see we have the two SATA connectors, so you can just shove your drives right in there. Personally, I think this is an awesome concept, but we really need to get into some testing. Before we do that, we also need to go over the specs. And there's a lot to go over here, so just bear with me. For the CPU, we have the Amlogic S922XH, and the H really stands for the built-in audio DAC that they have. This is a six-core processor, basically the same thing that comes in the Odroid N2. We have four Cortex-A73 cores at 1.8 gigahertz, and two A53 cores at 1.9. Now, there is a chance that this could be boosting a little higher to 2.2, but we'll have to see when we get in there. The GPU is the Mali G52 MP4 at 846 megahertz, 4 gigs of LPDDR4 RAM, 64 gigabytes of eMMC flash dedicated to Android. We also have a micro SD card slot in the bay that will support up to two 3.5 inch hard drives, 16 terabytes apiece. HDMI 2.1 up to 4K 60 Hertz with HDCP 2.2, AVE 10 engine with 4K H265, VP9, and VG2 video decoding up to 60 FPS. It also supports Dolby Vision, Advanced HDR10, HDR10+, HLG, and Prime HDR. For the audio, you can use the 3.5mm AV jack in the back. We also have optical audio out. There's two RCA jacks that support DTS Listen and Dolby Audio decoding. Because after all, this SOC has a DAC built in. It's the ESS9108. It's got gigabit Ethernet built in, dual band 802, BGN, and AC Wi-Fi. This is 2 times 2 Memo Wi-Fi 5. Bluetooth 4.1, four USB 3.0 ports. It's powered by a 19 volt, three amp adapter. It's running Android 9, Core Elect, and I'm pretty sure we could get EMU Elect up and running on this unit also. Upon first boot, we just need to do a little bit of a setup here. 
keep that scale looks good. It's going to ask me to connect to Wi-Fi. I'll go ahead and do that and we should get right into the operating system. And here it is. It looks just like B-Link's other launchers. We'll go to apps. Not much pre-installed here. We have Chrome, Movie Player, Media Center, local update for flashing an update that you download from their website if there's ever an update. We have an app market, B-Files Explorer. And if we swipe up from the bottom here, we can get our regular Android menu. I'm using a mouse and a keyboard. It just makes it easier to navigate for me. But the included remote also has air mouse functionality built in. We'll go over here to settings, device preferences, storage, and it's showing up. We have that four terabytes of storage. So I'm going to go ahead and sign into the Google Play Store. I'm going to get a few things downloaded and we'll do some testing. So since this box is touted as a media playback device, it's time to get into some 4K media playback. First thing I wanted to check was the Widevine version. It's stating that we have L1 down here. Unfortunately, the apps that you can download from the Google Play Store are not the HD version. We'll go back to the main menu. And I've tried to load up the Android TV version of Netflix, but it keeps crashing. The version you can get either from Google Play or their own little server is basically the SD version of Netflix that you download on your phone with no Widevine support. I mean, it does work. I'll get in here to a documentary. We'll go with Our Planet. Start this up. Everything loads up fast. It's really nice, but there's no way to turn this to 4K, especially using the app version that I'm on right now. And I've tried several different versions of the Android TV app. I just can't get them to launch. Now, luckily, with their version of YouTube TV, we do have the TV version of YouTube, and we can go full HD. We can even go UHD with this. I do have stats for nerds up, so we can see if we have any drop frames. And with pretty much every 1080p video that I've tested here, I get a couple drop frames at first. But overall, I mean, it's super steady. You'll never notice any drop frames. This is just a weird aspect ratio here for a 1080p video. But 1080p playback on the YouTube TV app works great with this little box, just like it sits. Moving over to a 4K video. It does work great, but our viewpoint is going to be set at 1920 by 1080, even if you're on a 4K TV. That's one of the issues I've always run into with these Android boxes. Even though we can support 4K streaming from YouTube, we're really only going to be seeing a 1080p screen here or a 1080p picture because the app itself won't go 4K, and I've run into this in the past with different Android boxes. So let's go ahead and test an app that we can really see a 4K picture with, and that's Plex. I'm going to be streaming from a server. 4K, 30 FPS, 8 megabits per second. And I'm using the original quality. Streaming from Plex works great on this device. 4K 30, even 4K 60 does work pretty well. Let's test another one here. We're at 27.6 megabits per second, 4K, 30 FPS, or 29.9. Original quality. Super smooth. Buffers out really fast. I'm actually connected over Ethernet, and I would recommend that if you want to do a lot of streaming with something like this. And just to give you an idea here, our playback info, 27.6 megabits per second, MP4, 4K, 30. Very nice. But there is one issue that I've run into, at least with the version of Plex that I'm using right now. If I go with a super high bit rate, well, super high as in 83 megabits per second, 4K, 29.9 FPS, the app crashes. And I gotta say, I really do think it's the version of the app that I'm using right now on the hardware and not just the hardware itself. But this is something that I've run into with this one. And I don't have the same issue on, let's say, the NVIDIA Shield Android TV. All the videos we just took a look at were streaming, but what about native playback from our internal hard drive? Remember, I have a 4 terabyte, 3.5 inch drive in here. I put a couple demo videos. And they work absolutely amazing. So yes, this will handle 4K 60 FPS, but it has to be a certain format. It's not going to cover every single format out there. But overall, I got to say that this little box is handling native video playback really well. All right, with some video playback out of the way, it's time to move over to some gaming. I'm using an Xbox One controller. This is Minecraft Pocket Edition. I'm using the beta version so we can see the FPS on screen. And 
I did turn fancy graphics off and I have it set to 10 chunks and as you can see there is some stuttering going on and this actually happens with fancy graphics on or off. I was hoping I could fix it but I've always had this issue on the S922 with Minecraft Pocket Edition. Next up we have King of Fighters All-Stars and this one actually impressed me. I'm set to a high frame rate but I've set the rendering resolution to as low as it can go. It is playable here, and it does work with an Xbox controller. And finally, for native Android gaming, we have Real Racing. This is a very well-optimized game, and it works on low-end devices really great, so I was sure it was going to handle it here fine. Next up, just a bit of emulation testing for this video, but I definitely want to make a full video using EMU Elect on this. This is the Dreamcast emulator known as ReDream from the Google Play Store, Dead or Alive 2. I'm not upscale, but we're getting a pretty good frame rate here. And finally, PSP using PPSSPP, Tekken 6, 2x resolution, no hacks on, FPS is up in the top right hand corner, and we're running at 60. So in the end, this is definitely an interesting little Android box. I'd like to test Corelec and EMU Elect. If everything goes right with Corelec, we should be able to enable a 4K video playback with Netflix and a few other apps that it just won't work with on Android. But I think that's the major downside here. The Android version they're using is pretty much a phone version with a little bit of an overlay. It's Android 9, and they just can't get it certified like the Mi Box or even the Nvidia Shield Android TV, and not to mention the price of this unit. I've seen it for around $250 with no hard drives installed, so you will have to add your own hard drive. And with the Shield TV, all you really need to do is plug in a couple external hard drives, and it's going to work about the same. But that's pretty much it for this video. I will have a couple more coming up using the same Android box, but we're going to be booting from a micro SD card with Corelec and EMU-Elec, so if there's anything else you want to see running on this, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.